Hey, Ben, this is Brent in Dallas. Hey, How are Brent. You, sir? Hey, how's it going, man? Thanks for the call. Hey, no problem. Uh, pleasure to talk to you again. Uh, congrats on the iHeartRadio thing. That's, oh, thanks, that's man. That's pretty big. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, kind of to piggyback off this, and I, I just jumped in a little bit late, but today I, just, I was thinking about you know how the GOP was a laughing stock. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're crumbling. They're going to be gone. They're a joke. And I don't hear much of that now. That'd be, you think the Democrats kind of saved their ass? Uh, <laughs> where <laughs> the GOP was, you know, going to crumble. And now you've got people that are looking at uh, party divided, the Democrats, yep. Yep. Uh, going against the Republicans who really probably won't leave that party, in my opinion. Here's the thing, man. Listen, let me tell you, they we were laughing at the Demo at the Republicans, um, but they didn't see what I saw and what a lot of you guys saw from the very beginning, that the same divide existed in the Democratic side of the equation, that there was a tremendous divide. And the only reason the only reason that it wasn't so obvious was because of their consistent attempts to coronate Hillary Clinton. It gave the appearance of party unity through the primaries when in actuality it was a dead carcass of of just a party divided trying to ram a candidate that really no one in America wants down our throats, suppressing a progressive movement, which exacerbated the problem. Right. So so we were laughing at the Republicans and we we snatched victory out of the we snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory. This could have been an easy uh, destruction of the Republican Party in a significant way. Right. They would never have disappeared completely, but they could have gone off the map for a little while, especially with Donald Trump at the helm. But Donald Trump being a smart enough man to put smart people around him to play this political game decently understood that now he can outflank Hillary Clinton from the left. And so he no longer has to be the buffoon. He simply has to play good politics. And he's starting to do that. That is terrifying. And so now we're posed, we're, we're, we're faced with an option of a, of a, a man who's obviously unstable, right? Uh, uh, Donald Trump is just obviously not stable, but he is going to play this game because he played the Republican side of the equation so well. Thanks for the call, man. He played the um, he played the Republican side of the equation so well that they couldn't stop him. So why in the on earth do we think for one moment he's not going to play the game of the general election just as good? And I'm sorry if you want me to just say, oh, Donald Trump is a sexist, misogynist, racist uh, bastard, right? You want me to say that, but the reality of it is me saying that would be far more irresponsible than me showing you where we are the most vulnerable. We are vulnerable on foreign policy with a candidate, candidate like Hillary Clinton, and we are vulnerable on economic policy with a candidate like Hillary Clinton, and we are vulnerable, believe it or not, because of Bill Clinton, we are vulnerable from just a moral perspective. And so if you want somebody to just say, you know, hey, you know, Donald Trump, go to hell, Donald Trump, you're, uh, what's this tweet from, uh, from your uh, from my, my girl um and, and i i'm sorry that's a colloquial uh sorry uh, my woman or no that is that's even worse somebody i admire and i'm uh, upset with uh there's a tweet from um there's a tweet from elizabeth warren again going after donald trump about being a small man and and, and you know saying all the if you want somebody who's just going to beat the war drums go see elizabeth warren but she's not going to expose the reality that we are extremely vulnerable. And when I say we, it's everybody who thinks Donald Trump would be a nightmare. And that includes some Republicans. And now we don't even have a candidate who's insulated from that insanity. Imagine, and I got to get off Donald Trump because I got a lot to talk about tonight. But, but there is, there, imagine his only attack against Bernie Sanders being the Red Scare. He would have to go back to the right on everything to make sure he fuels enough red scare to to drum up enough support. But 
because he's not he's potentially not going up against Bernie Sanders. We'll see how how uh, uh, how California pans out. Make sure you I think the deadline is tonight at midnight. Make sure you register to vote. But because he may not be going against Bernie Sanders and he gets to go up against somebody like Hillary Clinton, he understands that he can corner her from every side of the chessboard and he can do it for the next five months. And you think you think that the stuff that he said in 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 January is going to make a hill of a beans difference. God, I went back to the old school on hill of beans. You think it's going to make a hill of bean of difference for people who are just tuning in come August. 